He is known for his contributions to metaphysics and ontology. He is recognized for his method of relations, which he used to analyze the contradictions within common sense conceptions. He is Johann Friedrich Herbart. Johann Friedrich Herbart, a renowned metaphysician, embarked on his philosophical journey by delving into the realm of skepticism prevalent in the Humean Kantian sphere of thought. He traced the origins of this skepticism back to Locke's perplexity concerning the concept of substance. Herbart questioned the validity of even the forms of experience due to the contradictions they seemed to entail. However, he acknowledged that these forms were undeniably given to us, just like sensations are, and thus, their existence could not be disregarded. Recognizing the limitations of attempting a psychological inquiry into the origin of these conceptions at this stage, Herbart understood that using these illegitimate conceptions in the process would only lead to further contradictions. Therefore, he sought to find a way to supplement these incomplete conceptions. Herbart believed that what was already known should guide the search for what was yet to be known, ensuring a logical and systematic approach. Considering that experience affirmed the unity of two contradictory marks, say M and N, while logic denied it, Herbart concluded that the conception must be supplemented by positing several myths this method, known as the method of relations, became a fundamental aspect of his philosophical system, serving as a counterpart to the Hegelian dialectic. In the realm of ontology, Herbart employed this method to determine the reality corresponding to empirical conceptions such as substance and cause, or, more specifically, inherence and change. However, before delving further, Herbart emphasized the importance of analyzing the notion of reality itself. Although doubt could be cast upon whether the given is what it appears, the undeniable fact remains that it is something. Thus, the conception of the real consists of the two fundamental conceptions of being and quality. Herbart argued that the recognition of that which we are compelled to posit, which cannot be negated, lies within the simple conception of being. He further emphasized that this positing occurs when things are experienced through sensations, as enduring the persistence of a presentation binds us to the notion of being. As Herbart continued his exploration, he encountered contradictions within the common-sense conception of inherence, where a thing was believed to possess several attributes. According to common sense, each attribute, presented in intuition, had to be posited. However, conceiving a thing as a whole, as common sense suggests, contradicted the absolute positions of the individual attributes. This led Herbart to postulate the existence of several things, denoted as A1, A2, and so on, each serving as the seat or substance for a distinct attribute. The unity of the original thing or substance, which seemed lost, could only be restored by assuming that the first thing in each series was identical. Thus, the appearance of inherence was revealed to be a result of a plurality of reals, rather than a single substance with various attributes. Similar contradictions arose when contemplating change, as opposing qualities within one real proved unthinkable upon reflection. Herbart's metaphysical supplementing remained consistent, and he recognized that substantiality necessitated causality as its true correlative. By critically examining these philosophical concepts, Herbart sought to reconcile the contradictions and provide a comprehensive understanding of reality and its manifestations. Johann Friedrich Herbart, a renowned philosopher and educator, believed that every child possessed a unique potential that needed to be nurtured and transformed through education. He understood that this potential remained unfulfilled until it was analyzed and shaped by the values of civilization. For Herbart, education was not just about imparting knowledge but also about fostering moral and intellectual development. Herbart's pedagogy emphasized the connection between individual growth and societal contribution. He firmly believed that people could only fulfill their true purpose by becoming productive citizens. To achieve this, he outlined five key ideas that composed his concept of individual maturation, inner freedom, perfection, benevolence, justice, and equity. In order to cultivate these qualities in students, Herbart advocated for a structured educational approach. Teachers were encouraged to prepare topics of interest to the children, present them, and then question the students inductively. By building on their existing knowledge, the students would acquire new knowledge and skills. The lesson's achievements would then be summarized deductively, and finally, related to moral precepts for daily living. Herbart also stressed the importance of using literature and historical stories to engage students' interests. He believed that these masterpieces of the canon would not only teach moral lessons but also develop students' appreciation for psychological and literary nuances. By moving away from predictable and allegorical tales, Herbart sought to inspire a deeper understanding and connection with the texts. Although Herbart passed away in 1841, his pedagogy experienced a resurgence in the mid-19th century. His ideas found resonance in countries like the United Kingdom, France, and the United States, where the development of individuality into character aligned with the prevailing economic, political, and social circumstances. 
Many educators, like Catherine Isabella Dodd, embraced and promoted Herbart's ideas, seeing them as a reflection of democratic ideals. While the focus on character building through literary appreciation waned after the First World War, Herbart's pedagogy continues to influence education today. It raises important questions about the role of critical thinking and literary understanding in shaping individuals and society. Johann Friedrich Herbart, a renowned philosopher, delved deep into the realms of aesthetics and ethics, unraveling the intricate connections between beauty, morality, and human volition. According to Herbart, aesthetics explores the ideas that arise from the expression evoked by the relationships between objects that are deemed beautiful or otherwise. Beauty, he emphasized, must be distinguished from the notions of usefulness or pleasantness, as it is an absolute and involuntary attribution that arises when one attains the right perspective. In Herbart's philosophy, ethics is a branch of aesthetics, albeit the most significant one. It deals with the relations among volitions that unconditionally please or displease. Herbart identified these relations to be reducible to five, which could be further simplified. Each of these relations corresponds to a moral idea, the concept of a final society, a system of rewards and punishments, a system of administration, a system of culture, and an animated society. These ideas align with the notions of law, equity, benevolence, perfection, and internal freedom, respectively, when we consider the collective existence of individuals. For Herbart, virtue is the perfect alignment of the will with these moral ideas. It is the embodiment of these ideas in one's actions and choices. The individual virtues, then, become special expressions of this overarching virtue. Herbart recognized that the conception of duty arises when there are obstacles that impede the attainment of virtue. Duty compels individuals to navigate challenges and uphold moral principles. While a general framework of principles for conduct can be established, Herbart acknowledged that the application of ethics to specific cases remains a matter of fact. It requires an understanding of the complexities and nuances of real-life situations. This application of ethics to the realities of the world, with the aim of realizing moral ideas, constitutes what Herbart referred to as moral technology. This encompasses various domains, with the chief divisions being pedagogy and politics, where ethics is applied to education and governance, respectively. Johann Friedrich Herbart's exploration of aesthetics and ethics provides us with valuable insights into the intrinsic link between beauty, morality, and human volition. It reminds us to appreciate the absolute beauty that transcends time, place, and personal preferences. Moreover, it highlights the importance of aligning our will with moral ideas and fulfilling our duty in the face of obstacles. Herbart's philosophy offers a framework for navigating the complexities of daily life, guiding us towards a more virtuous and ethical existence. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.